and you say drive safely, those are words. We don't have drive safely. During the transition, the automobiles have a sensor on it. So if I'm 40 feet away from your car, if I got mad at you, I couldn't hit you. The sensor would stop my car. That's what I mean by intelligent management of the Earth's resources. Politicians cannot do that. They don't understand technology. Today, the problems are technical, not political. As soon as people get that through their heads, if they do, they'll understand that war is the most corrupt, supreme failure of nations to bridge the difference. You have a Pentagon in Washington that defends this country. Well, what happened to Pearl Harbor, we gave them radar, and the kids detected the enemy planes coming over. And they called their captains, it's probably our planes. What the hell good are these people if they don't know how to defend it? Then the people that couldn't afford armies hijacked two airplanes and flew into the uh, trade centers, you see? And we never said, why did they do that? How can we build so much hatred in the people? What did we do in the past? Nobody seems to know that. Well, Jack, a lot of people who watch this program believe yes. that it was the uh, American government that flew those planes a into conspiracy. the world. Trade. Yes, a conspiracy. I don't buy that, but I think that American government is stupid. They do a lot of stupid things, but not that stupid. So you don't Listen, think, you think that I was don't buy the conspiracy some thing. people with box cutters who hijacked those airplanes? I don't buy it. Okay? Okay. Next question. All right. Let's say, for a moment, uh, looking into the future, that uh, everybody on the planet goes, Jacques, that's a great idea. We'll stop making weapons. We'll start building this new utopia. Don't Who's in that word, utopia? Okay. It implies a final state. Okay. Well, this, this, this Venus project idea, okay? A better means a, of living. A better means of living. Let's say everyone adopts your idea for a better means exactly. of living. Okay. Who's in charge? Okay. During the transition from the old monetary system to the resource-based economy, which you didn't ask me how the new economy works. We'll get to that. During the transition, there will be trouble, crime, murder, everything you have today. If we get to the point of automation as we want it, I then believe that when people have access to the necessities of life, they do not steal. If you made a public library where anyone can get a book, that's wonderful. But they fought the women that marched for that. They threw rotten eggs at them. Let me finish. They threw rotten eggs at them. All the trouble you have for every bit of change, of social change, there was always a minority beat up, put in jail, you know, for the difference. So I'm saying this. If you do that, you hold back the future. You should not be afraid of ideas. Listen to all kinds of ideas and reject those that you feel won't work or question it. But you didn't answer the question, Jack. Who's in charge? Okay. During the transition, the people that have studied the Venus Project and how it works are not in charge. You're asking me who makes the decisions mm. and who has the right to make decisions mm. and by what authority. Mm. Does the public participate? Is it a democracy or is it a dictatorship of technology? It's not a dictatorship of technology. I want to say this because scientists are just as dumb as everyone else. They're part of the same institutions. They write books on why man can't fly. The Wright brothers never read their books so they built a flying machine. Edison was a nothing and he gave us many things. So don't think the establishment gives you ideas. Some American develops a new carburetor in his garage and he sells it to General Motors. And General Motors says, and now General Motors brings you. You don't know where that came from. When I worked for Douglas Aircraft, everything I thought of belonged to Douglas and the North of the Division. Did you know that? Well, yes, Even I'm when I went home and thought of ideas, it belonged to them. I can understand how that and works. And that to me is corrupt. Okay, we've talked about that, and I mean, I like the way you think you've got the great ideas. will be troublesome. But Jack, you've got to answer the question, who makes the decisions? No one. Here's how it's done. They're under the orders of a scientific group, the Venus Plan, which is written out. What they do is take samples of the soil, say, from all over England, and it goes to central agriculture. There they analyze the soil, and by the contents they say it's best to grow apple trees with that soil. That's not an opinion, that's a finding. No more opinions, no more what do you think, what do you think. But we measure, 
Yes. Who decides which scientists I make the decisions? I am proposing a system. This is a scientopoly, isn't it? This is a... No, if people agree upon this direction, which is using the scientific method applied to the social system, which means using science and technology to improve the lives of everyone and the environment. Today, when there's, mon when there's money in it, the bottom line is money. And the, it's not for the well-being of people. They don't really care about people. It's for the bottom line and for industry and for certain people's advantage. But in the resource-based economy is what we call it, then the bottom line is the benefit of people. So you don't make, first you take a survey of what we have all over the world. This is a global system. So you take a survey of what we have in resources, technology, personnel, and, okay, who, and who, who is decides sick? that we take a survey? Who, we are laying who out a direction. The survey? Who we puts are, the, the, the decision Venus Project into is. If people go along with what the Venus Project advocates, which is the benefit, the betterment of humankind, then we have a process level as to how to um, feed, house, and clothe people all over the world. When you want to make a bridge, you don't go to Aunt Minnie, who has a pastry. Um, restaurant. You go to people who make bridges, who have a history, and who have experience in that. And so, people, but they don't have say in the government. They, there is no government. They don't have say in the direction of society. We lay out a direction, and, and, and that's our, our end goal is to make a better world, make people creative, make people the highest potential that they can be, change school systems for that, and um, use the intelligent management of the Earth's resources. So how do you do that? By people who know how to build bridges. You go to people who, who, can, um, who can house people. You go to people who can make low-cost houses quickly using um, clean sources of energy, make them energy efficient, make them go together quickly. We're not looking for architects who build out of ego. We're looking for for the end problem, which is to house people. All right, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to the point of the resource economy and, the, and no money in a, in a minute, but I, but I still want to, I, I, you know, I'm sorry to labor the point, but I'm, you know, the, the uh, devil's advocate here. Okay. And I still don't understand who decides to do stuff. And it's all very well saying, you know, bridge builders build bridges, house builders build houses, or machines build houses directed by house builders, or whatever. I understand but your question. who is in power? Okay. The who Venus is in Project power? designed a procedure for attaining a future. If the majority of people want that, it'll happen. If they don't, it won't happen. So and be if democracy, they decide then, so that they want it... So it's a majority vote, is that what you're saying? No, if the majority can understand the procedures of the Venus Project, they may or may not understand it. I can only present the way to deal with problems. Because people come to me all the time and say, can you make three-dimension movies without glasses? I've done all that. I've designed artificial legs for doctors, hospital equipment, surgical instruments. But if the guy didn't have the money, he couldn't buy the artificial leg. So I didn't like that. And I said, Jock, you've got to design a society that works. Don't spend your time on invention. So I said to myself, how do you know your system will work? I says, I don't. I learned that from the scientific method. So I said, why don't you put your system to test? So I joined the Ku Klux Klan in Miami and dissolved it in a month and a half. Then I joined the White Citizens Council alone. They hate foreigners and dissolved that in one month. Then in New York City, I said, what are the, some of the most backward people in the area? The consensus were the Arabs. I said, what makes you think they're b backward? They still believe the earth is flat. So I said, boy, I better get in there and try to turn them around. And if I can't turn them around, I can't change society. Not a theory on paper, a nice little utopia where everything works well. That's BS, bad science. So I'm saying to you that I called up the Arabs and I said, can I meet with you? I called up the head of the Arab group. There's always a head of the Ku Klux Klan. I called him up and I said, I'd like to speak with you. He said in his accent, you are Arab? I said, eh, I'm not an Arab, but I speak a little bit of many languages. So he said, from where do your father be born? And that means, you know, where was your father born? So I says, in Lebanon. 
He said, very good, come and saw me, means come and see me. So I came to see him, and he said, you believe the world he owned? I said, yes. He went, that means it can't be, in his terms. Then he pointed to his head to show me, he held up his hand like this, and he said, if the world he owned, all the water fall me down here. All the people, they fall me down. I thought he was doing a good job for a non-educated man. What, what year was this, Jack? This is about... 45 years ago, 50 years ago. Wow. So I said to him, uh, I said, I've got to change him, because that's important. So I gave him a rubber balloon, which I brought with me, and I rubbed it with fur, and I put cornflakes in his hand, and told him to hold his hand 10 inches away, or this far away from the balloon. And if you rub it with fur fast, all the cornflakes like jumped up, yeah. and his jaw hit the pavement. And he said, world he magnet? I said, yeah. Ah, and he went and explained that to all the other Arabs. It took an hour and a half, I turned them around. So I found out how people think, where they get their ideas from, and approach them on their level, not mine. So, Jacques, yes. I'm sorry, I'm going to keep That's pushing right. this point until keep I get an answer. But I want you to. Good, because you did ask me before we started to push you on points that are important, and I think this is a really important point. So, let's imagine for a second that you make your film and everybody who goes on the website, everybody loves what your, your ideas are and they all say, we want this. We oh. want this Venus project to and be the reality. To it. Yeah. So there they are, happy for it to happen. Is it you that makes the decision? What happens next? I wrote a proposal for a new type of society criticizing and showing possible alternatives, such as, you've got signs on the road, drive carefully, slippery when wet. We put abrasive in the highway, so it's not slippery when wet. We, don't, we show them Jack, those Jack, alternatives. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you keep coming up with great ideas yes. for things. Yes. But you're avoiding that issue. Who makes the decisions we in this world? We put out the proposals. If they agree with that and support they it have economically... A vote, People have a vote. Is that what you're saying? No. Do, does everyone have a button in their living room? Yes or no? It comes on the television. We want to do this. We want to build a farm here or we want to build a block of flats here. Yes or no? Is, it that, is that it? No. No, that's not, not it. Not at all. So how is it? How do I... If we've I'm a citizen already, of this planet, we've already how worked. do I affect my life? We already worked that out. That doesn't have to be done anymore. We put the proposal up before people and they say go. That means they have to support it economically during the transition. Look, we have there, to build... There are, there are a lot of people today talking about a better wor world in flowery terms and say that we need a change. We can't go on with what we're doing. We're going to pollute the, the earth. We're going to kill ourselves with bombs. Um, but they don't pose anything. They, nobody says, how do you get out of this? They're just beginning to ask those questions and say, we need to do something else. Jacques has asked these questions in 1929 when the, he saw the first the, the large depression. Hmm. And it is then when he started to look around and say, this does not work. There are things in store windows, there are technical people, there are farms, there are people that want to do things and make things, but people are thrown out of their houses they, because the world is still the same place, but they don't have any money in their pockets. It's the rules of the game that we play by that are screwed up. So he proceeded, when he was a young man, to to devise another system that would work for the benefit of all, that would house people, that would clothe people, that would make them creative, that this today is, a, is an established society. Many, many years ago, many people became comfortable and then tried to freeze things and keep them as it is. The society that we are proposing is an emergent society. It's not fixed. It's not frozen. Jacques laid out a direction to work towards in city planning, in transportation, and, and 
across the board where never nobody else was working on that and it's not a fixed society it's an emergent society where things are growing that's why he doesn't like it to be called a utopia because that's like we've made a final society and this is it and you can't go any further his society can you imagine turning science and technology and all all scientists and say how do we build a better society how do we eliminate accidents how do we how do we make clean sources of energy how do we turn science and technology over to make things better for people that's not what we're about today okay well these are all good things let, let me read a, a, a few texts out um, Brenda and Hull says it will be a form of communism you will never get away from someone who wants to dictate that's because he knows nothing about this system okay Rob Keane and Wigan says Jack just say that you will make the decisions I would be happy for you to do that Aidan Doherty says, as long as there is power, evil people will want it. How do you stop them? Okay. The Wiener Kreisach has a proposal for government operations in which there are no people in government. Oh, here we're getting to it now. Didn't know that. Okay, no, no people, people in, government. in government. So who makes the decisions? I'm going to show you. Good. Okay, so we have a computer with electrical tentacles into the soil. If the water table drops, that pumps water out there. If the nutrient chains, that machine pumps nutrients out there. Nine months ago, a computer was developed that can handle 1,000 trillion bits of information per second. No group of humans can do that. So we move humans out because the future world is so highly technical, no human being is capable of handling trillions of bits of information input per second. Only computers can do that. So man is being put out. If you don't understand me, go to your supermarkets, you see new checkout machines where you pitch a card through and they're moving Jack. people out. Jack, I'm sorry, we're going to go for another break now. Be back here soon. Once again, if you'd like to text in your questions or comments for Jack Fresco. And Roxanne Meadows, please do so now. See you back here very soon. Welcome back to On the Edge of Me, Theo Chalmers, and my special guests, Jack Fresco and Roxanne Meadows. Right, Jack, just before the break here, you were saying, and I think I've understood this correctly, um, you were saying that computers will make the decisions. Well, what we call cybernetics. Computers operate machines. If you go to an automobile company today, you'll see robots putting the wheels on and everything. The people are being moved out. Do you understand Yeah, that? but I don't want the robots telling me what wheels I want. The robots telling you what? What wheels I want. The robots can measure things better than you can. Yeah, yeah, of course they can. But, but if, we, if we hand our power to a bunch of robots, Come on. You That's like, a dystopia, you not see a utopia. You've a lot of lousy movies like exactly. 1984, Brave New World, Atlas Shrug. is written by Hollywood hacks, and they don't know how machines work, so the robots choke the designers. That's Hollywood, not reality. But I, but I don't think, well, I'm not ready to have a robot make my decisions for me, and All I don't right, think, we'll you know... check you, that out. Let's check it out. Okay. All right. You don't turn a generator to keep your lights going, do you? No. You would sign that the robots can they do a better job than you can. Now, in the early days, a pilot used to look out of an airplane and about a mile high. Today, the Army took that decision away from pilots, and they have Doppler radar, which hits the ground, bounces back, and says, you're 5,300 feet, three inches off the ground. No human can do that. No, the Eurofighter, for instance, What's can't that? be flown by a human being. It has to be flown by Still. computers. It's, it's it, so unstable. It will unstable. be in the next ten years. Well, that's the case now. It's, they, they, they've got people in them, The pilots. Army is flying planes automatically. But the pilot still has the last word, doesn't he? The pilot says, no, oh, we're, going no, no, we're going no. up, we're going down. No, the mission is the last word. In other words, they have guided missiles, and the guided missiles are set to hit a given target, and they are smart enough to sense metals and everything else, or go up the rear end of an airplane. Okay. It doesn't if, need to be steered by people anymore. So what All if the computers decide that there are too many people on the planet? No, oh, wait, what's your question? What well, do you do with overpopulation? No, no, that's not the question. The question is, what if the computers decide that there are too many people and the food supply I, won't feed I, I those people? I want to answer So that. would they say, oh, let's kill a few? I answer, answer that. Computers do not do that. 
computers and scientific machines are are really extensions of human attributes, but they have no feelings. Machines don't care. If you destroy a de laptop in front of 40, they don't say, we're going to get you this month, but next month for sure. They don't care. Don't so, you understand so that? Are you saying That's a human that, projection. Zach, are you saying then that computer programmers will rule the world? No, not at all. They're under the guidance of the Venus Project if they agree. If they don't agree, they won't support it. If you, if you have a cavalry in Poland, like in Poland they believed the cavalry was the most important thing, and the Germans believed war tanks were, and they slaughtered the hell out of the Poles because they couldn't get past that point. If the American and English people and French people don't realize what I'm talking about, they'll be blown to smithereens by their own stupidity. We are lousing up the air and the oceans, and that we know that politicians don't know what to do, because I've asked them. I've asked every politician that I've grown up with, and so what do you do about this? How would you stop cars from hitting each other? How would you stop building from burning. I don't know. I don't know. They don't know what to do. They're businessmen okay, let me, let, or lawyers. Let me read a couple of texts here. Paul in Warrington says, wouldn't a new society need a leader or do we lead no, ourselves? No leaders. And what if a person went against the grain? Who makes law? Okay. We feel that people go against the grain because they've been damaged by society. In other words, if you have two children, I'm a great believer in environment shapes values. I believe that the dialect you speak, your facial expressions, you learn. Women move a certain way. Oh, did I see a gorgeous hat? And if a guy is brought up by women only, they'll move just like that. If you're raised in Italy, you say, come on, they eat. It's a good food. Is that an imitation? No, that's the product effect that environment has upon people. This is nature v. nurture, isn't it? The old argument. Yes. Now, nurture, like in Othello. It's, it's, they think that human nature is a certain way, most people, because they're brought up that way. Actually, there's no such thing as free choice. When, if you ask an Eskimo, what do you want? You can have anything you want. He doesn't say a stainless steel refrigerator. He can't say that. So if you ask an impoverished person, what would make you happy? A steady job, maybe, and a good car? What the hell do you think he can say? He can't pass that that his society superimposes upon him. When you're very young, the society starts pumping stuff into your head. What's the greatest country in the world? I don't know, the good old USA, if you're brought up there. And who loves you more than anybody in the world? I don't know, your mommy and daddy. So they pump all that crap in your head, then as you get older, there's a Mickey Mouse Club, all crap. And as long as you start filling the heads of kids with crap, you're hurting the future. So kids can learn geology, continental drift, space science. Kids can learn anything. They don't need to be members of the Mickey Mouse Club. That's socially offensive. So what you call decent people today would be considered criminals in the near future. The, the supreme justice of the Supreme Court will be considered a criminal in the future. Why? Because there used to be a definition of a criminal. And that definition was one who removes a thing from your house or your person without your permission. Today they've changed the definition. One who's caught, which is much better. Well, let's okay. talk about money. Yeah. Let's yes. talk about money. There isn't now, any money in our society. That's the question. Yes. Okay, this is a, uh, an economy based on what's available. Yes. Not money. Not money. So let's... Well, let me ask a question yeah. then. Say I'm living in this society yes. and I've got an old car yes. and I want a new car. But I don't just want any new car because I'd quite like to have something a bit nice. I could, I could how do I get that? Yes, how and and get does that mean somebody else doesn't get okay. that? If she drives an old beat-up Volkswagen and you drive a Mercedes, if her brakes fail, you die. So we have no old cars. They weigh as much as a new, co new car. So we reprocess them and turn out the best cars America can turn out. Let me explain that further. Okay. The soldiers in the U.S. Army Air Force don't get any beat up old planes. They get the best the nation can turn out, the best machine guns, the best radar that we can turn out. Why don't we do that in times of peace? Why don't we give hospitals whatever they need? Right, electron, electron microscope, MRI machines, whatever they need, give it to them. It's based on resources. Money is a nothing thing. 
If you were shipwrecked on an island with $10 million and your wife had gold and diamonds and both for it, and there's no water, no arable land, no fish, you have nothing. Money is a nothing thing. It's a made-up story that supports certain groups of people. And they call it the Federal Reserve System, which is not federal at all. It's as federal as the federal laundry. They don't have, it's not a government thing. The public is deliberately uneducated to understand how things work. In America, when we had slavery, if you taught your slaves how to read, you were fined. Do you know that? And in Salem, Massachusetts, they burned women who disagreed with certain aspects of the Bible. Well, they burned them they as witches. They burned them as witches. Yeah. Now, did you know this? That the guy that found those women got their possessions, their books, their house, their car, their horse and wagon. Did you know you accumulated their possessions if you pointed them out? I didn't know that. That's the, but that should be I, in our history book. I can't book. say I'm desperately surprised. I mean, that, but that just shows you that there are... That man has the capacity to be evil. No, if brought up and, in, in, in and even in sorry, I've got to say this, even in your let me prove vision, to you that it wouldn't won't. there still be people who are evil? No, that's a, that's what they teach you today. That's not your ideas. This system cannot go on unless it points out you can't have a system where everybody gets everything because there'll be jealousy, rage differences in personalities, some people are hardworking, some are lazy. That's the crap they give you, which is not true. I'm going to show you how people get to be the way they are. I mean, I, I, I love all these ideas. Everybody can have whatever they want. Machines are doing all the work. This yes. is, you know, you this... go back to school to learn something useful, a new profession. But, but there are people who are just naturally sociopaths. Not so. That's all Surely. folk ways. That's not true. You don't think there are naturally evil Even people? that I don't think they are, I'm going to explain how they get to be that way. When you've got two children, if you play with the young one, and the seven-year-old says, you'll notice that lower lip, or I go, if you're playing with the young one, you're making jealousy and envy. I always take my older child, put him out, and my younger child, and say, this is your baby brother. I do never use one child against the other. Why can't you put your dishes away like your sister does? You leave everything spread around and I have to pick up after you. If mother does that, she makes jealousy and envy amongst the children. Women will have to go back to school to learn how to raise children. Now, you're taught in school that plants grow. I'm sure you were. Mm -hmm. And you're taught in school that everybody should have a right to their own opinion. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now. Suppose you lived across the way from me, and I see ten guys coming out of your apartment, and I have a right to my own opinion. She could be a ballet instructor, language instructor, never give people the right to their own opinion. If their own opinion is sane, and I say, what's going on there, I honestly don't know. She could be a language instructor, a ballet instructor, but if you give everybody a right to their own opinion, you think man will ever get to the moon? Nah, not in a thousand years. I'm not interested in that. Are you a rocket expert? Do you know anything about space travel? I don't want your opinion. You know, if you have a society as it is today, and you have few nations and few people controlling most of the Earth's resources, you're going to have war, you're going to have poverty, you're going to have stealing, you're going to have crime. And then you make laws and try and make people ethical and say, don't steal, and you put them in jail and you call them evil if you do that. In the society we're talking about, you produce abundance as quickly as possible and you make goods and services available to everyone. So you eliminate the need for stealing. So you change what you call human nature. It's really no human nature. You change human behavior by making goods and services avail available. So you don't have to make laws don't steal. You don't call them evil because they steal. You get this good and bad, right and wrong from religion. But if you change the environment, you change the way people behave towards one another. If you make goods and services available so they don't have to go to work at jobs that they hate, and people who have minimum wage, they have stress up to here, they have to take days off to take their kid to the hospital, because they can't afford medical care in the United States anyway, in a good part of the world, then you have people who have stress up to here, and it's easier to try and steal, and they would call them evil. You know, you're not born with bigotry or prejudice or envy or, or 
being mad. I have no doubt that if you were to give people whatever they wanted, there would be less crime, but there would still be crime. People would have affairs and the husband or the wife would find out and kill the husband or the wife. Yes. That would happen. So you During would still have crime. Yes. Well, but after the transition, nobody would have affairs, no one would get jealous, no one would I'm kill anyone? I'm about anybody? to explain that to you. Okay. When I was 21, I worked my way to the South Sea Islands. I want to know what people would be like if they weren't brought up in civilization. When I got to, to Tuamotu, when I landed there, I brought mirrors and beads. I was going to give it out to the natives mm -hmm. to establish friendship. I come as a friend, mm -hmm. not to take anything away from them. But they were already in my hut. Three hours after I arrived, giving out my mirrors and beads to one another with a great big grin. Well, Gandhi did to that, them, didn't he, in the 19th well, century, and he gave them all syphilis, you know. Now, I said to them, well, how come you're giving my stuff away? And they said, you've got too many, too many things. I didn't understand that until three days later, when the old people pulled in a net full of fish, they threw fish to anyone standing there. They didn't say, you owe me five bucks, you owe me seven bucks. They just gave you things. And they were completely nude, those people. And I never saw a guy on the island stare at a female body. They were swimming nude ever since they were that high. And when they made love to a female, they had no fetishes. They stroked the whole female. Do you understand? There were no tit men, leg men, ass men. What you've got today, all the damn variations and fetishes because women and men have been separated. If, if everybody in America had a nose a foot long, you'd have surgery done. Do you understand me? People would run down and see, say, she's a funny girl. There's no such thing as beauty. If you bring up people to believe in all this artificiality, you damage their lives and make it almost impossible to function. Love does not exist. Okay. Let me explain that to yeah, you. But let me read you a text quickly, because it's going to scroll off the screen and I'll miss it otherwise. Carol says, we would have a new higher consciousness in a new world. Your questions are coming from the ego of this society. That's obviously addressed to me. Yeah. So perhaps she thinks, you know, this is, I'm talking from the old world and you're in the new world. And, and, I, and to some extent, I can understand that. I can, I can see that okay. a lot of people would okay. be positively affected okay. by this new okay. world. Okay. Here's the real story. Okay. When I was a kid, I designed an airplane miniature and it crashed into the ground. And an older kid came over me and said, your wings are too far back, move them forward. I said, how did you learn that? He says, well, I built one and it crashed and some older guy told me. He didn't say my plane is better than yours. That's the ego thing. My plane is better than yours. Kids, I can run faster than you. I can fight you. My daddy can lick your daddy. Where do they get that? In the competitive system. So I learned by sharing ideas, you both gain. If I attack you and say I can run faster than you, I always said to kids, you probably can run twice as fast as me to get them off my back. And a lot of people want to hurt you. They say, where did you get that shirt? In the Salvation Army? That's an attack. But if you say, I found it in the reject pile of the Salvation Army, there's nothing further they can say. But you have to understand the grammar of motives. Nobody ever read that book that I talked to called The Grammar of Motives, Mind in the Making by James Harvey Robinson.